Welcome to another video episode brought to you by LearnToGarden.net, your quality ornamental and landscape information source. Now, to help walk you through the do's and don'ts of perennial and rose gardening, here's your host, Master Gardener, Waco Bankston. Thanks for joining for another episode of uh, LearnToGarden.net video blog. And what I've got here is a purple nut sedge. Now, there's other similar nut sedges or sedges that look similar to this plant and uh, they're very hard to control in the garden. Here in our garden you're going to see a lot of uh, this uh, nut sedge and I'll show you some of that now as we walk through this episode. So what I'd like to do is just give you a little glimpse of the plant and look if you'll notice here and I'll, I'll show you a close-up of this but if you notice this one has been pulled up by the roots. Now your typical gardener thinks that they get this whenever they pull it out of the ground, but that's not the case. But if you look here, and I'll also you sh you'll see a close-up of this as well, they're called nut sedge because under the ground and along the root, they form these little uh, nodules that look like uh, a type of peanut or nut. And what they do is they connect by those uh, nuts, and that's hence where they got the name nut sedge, but they'll connect from there by the root and come up with another plant. So when you pull these up by the uh, plant, you typically pull them apart, but you leave a part of the root in the ground and that's going to come back as another sedge. Now this is a broadleaf and you'll see in the close-up, now meaning broadleaf, the leaves are very small, but nonetheless it's still broadleaf. If you compare it with a, br a grass blade, the uh, comparison is going to be different. The veiny structures on the grass is going to be uh, different than the less vadiza. That's what allow you to put uh, a product like 2,4-D or Weed Be Gone, anything for lawns. Make sure it's for your type of lawn. For me, it's going to be Centipede, so we purchased a, uh, a product that had 2,4-D and one other chemical in there that will treat the Lespediza or other broadleaf weeds and not hurt the remainder of the lawn. Now, there are several products you can use for your both your lawn and your landscape beds. Now, for us, for the landscape beds, we're using two products. One is called Over the Top. A fertilon product and the other is called sedge hammer or a, uh, a, a chemical to treat nut sedge and your yellow and purple nut sedge and, and a lot of other weeds actually. Now those you are it's selective but you have to read on the label and make sure it's safe to put around in in and around your ornamental flowers and, and beds. Now there are two chemicals you'll want to consider one's the type of pre-emergent and one post-emergent. Pre-emergent meaning when you apply it, it keeps weed seeds from germinating. It basically puts a barrier down in the first couple of inches of soil and keeps those seeds from germinating. Now, word of caution, when you apply that, make sure you haven't planted any. For instance, in November, I'm going to plant some uh, poppy seeds and whatnot. So I'll wait until those seeds germinate in November and get going, you know, a couple inches high before I'll apply that pre-emergent. Uh, products such as preen. Now post-emergent of course will just kill existing vegetation so you can go on and apply that just be careful what you're applying that around but again two chemicals pre and post-emergent. Pre gets the seeds before they germinate, post gets the plants and vegetation after they germinate. So to sum it up what we want to do is review the chemicals that we're using. For the lawn what we what I've got here is it's formulated for use on southern lawns. It's an ortho product called Weed Begone now what it's got in it is uh, a couple of chemicals, one being 2,4-D. So that's what you'd want to use for the lawn. Put it out, spray it in with the hose, and it's waterproof within uh, two hours, it says here, and kills over 200 weeds. So the other is for your ornamental beds, and it will uh, kill Bermuda, by the way, which is a real problem weed here in the south. But it's called Over the Top. It's a fertilone product and it's a, a grass killer including Bermuda. Bermuda you do not want to try to pull up out of the bed aesthetically again. It'll look good for a day or two but it's going to come right back. You've got to get this at the root and this will do it. It's uh, again called over the top. And then finally for the ornamental beds, just to recap, we've got the product called Sedge Hammer. Now I realize you can't see this box. I can barely read this without my glasses. But what this is, is it comes in a box. It's not going to be on the shelf like a normal bottle. You're going to uh, have to maybe look hard for it. It's fairly expensive. This little package that, if I'm not mistaken, uh, will uh, treat about a thousand square feet in, in a gallon of water in a, a sprayer. It's about 14 or 15 dollars. So it's not cheap. but Again, sedge hammer and over the top for the beds and weed begone for the lawns. 
there are two different ways you can apply these chemicals, one being a handheld pump sprayer and then the other, as we talked about, you can uh, screw it on the end of a hose and broadcast it that way. Now you'll want to be careful when you're spraying these with the, with the sprayer, either the hose end or the uh, pump sprayer, that the wind doesn't carry or drift the chemical into areas you wouldn't want them to go, for instance, in your ornamental beds that aren't listed as uh, tolerant of the chemical that you're applying. So appreciate you joining us here at LearnToGarden.net for another video episode. Hope you'll come again. Hope you've learned a little bit about weed management. And until then, here's to your weed-free garden. If you like what you've seen and want to see more, please visit LearnToGarden.net's video section for more gardening tips. Until next time, here's to your successful gardening.